Jay Mahamayaki. Jay, in our last discourse, we heard about Vasista taking a second birth as Mitra Varuna. And we'll go on to chapter 15. King Janama Jaya said, the getting back of another simpler body uh, by uh, Vasista is certainly described by you. Now tell me how the king Nimi got another body. Veda Vyasa said, O king, the Rishi Vasista only got back his body, but the king Nimi did not get back his body, what had been cursed by Vasista. The priests engaged in the sacrifice by Nimi began to consider when the Rishi Vasista cursed him in the following way. Oh, what unusual thing is this. Before the sacrifice is complete, the king Nimi has been cursed. Thus is against what we had expected. What can we do? What is the inevitable most, most thing to come to pass? How can we thwart it? By various mantras, they kept alive the body of the king in which breathing was still going in a little, and they prevented the body from decaying by worshiping the body with various mantras and kept it in a stationary state. When the sacrificial ceremony was complete, the rishis began to praise the gods with hymns whereupon the devas became pleased and came to the spot. When the munis informed the devas fully of the condition of the king's body, the devas spoke to the sorrowful king thus. O performer of good vows, we are all pleased with your sacrifice. Now ask a boon, O king. You ought to get an excellent birth as the fruit of performing the sacrifice. So ask what, what body, the body of a deva or a man you desire, or you can ask, if you like, for another similar body that your priest Brihaspati has gotten when he quit his body. At these words, the king Nimi was glad and spoke to them thus, O Devas, I have no aspiration for the body that is always liable to destruction. I therefore want to reside on the top of the eyelids of all beings. Therefore I ask this boon that I be able to move in the shape of Vayu, air, on the top of the eyes of all beings. Thus said the Deva spoke to the soul of Nimi, O king, pray to the most auspicious deity, the Devi, the highest goddess, she has been pleased with your sacrifice, therefore your prayer will certainly be granted. Hearing thus, the king began to pray with various hymns with intention and great devotion in a tremulous voice to the Devi. The Devi became pleased and appeared before him, seeing her shining like a, like a core of suns and looking exceedingly lovely and beautiful. All the persons there became very happy. They began to think themselves as very blessed and having done all that they could do. Knowing the Devi Bhagavati pleased, the king asked this boon from her. O oh, Devi, give me that knowledge, pure and simple, whereby final liberation is obtained. Also, I may be able to reside on the top of the eyelids of beings, the Devi, the Lord of the Devas, the mother of the world, being highly pleased, said thus, O king, at the expiry of this your parada karma, you will acquire pure knowledge and you will reside on the tops of the eyes in the shape of Ayu, and through your residing there, the beings will wink, i.e. open and close their eyes. The men, beasts, and birds will wink due to your residing there, but the immortals will always remain with steadfast gaze. They will not wink. Thus granting him the boon and addressing all the munis, the Bhagavati, the highest deity, disappeared. When the Devi disappeared from their sight, the munis then thought much, and they took the body of the king, Nimi, to churn it duly for the sake of getting a son from Nimi, the high-souled Munis performed homa ceremonies and placing the piece of wood Arani on his body began to utter mantras and churned his body. When the woods were then churned, a soul endowed with all auspicious signs looking like a second Nimi was born to them. As the son was born due to the churning of the Aranis, the boy was named Miti. And as it came out of the body of Jonica, the boy was named Jonica, O king. As the king Nimi lost his body, 
i.e. became Vidya, through the curse of Vishistha, all his descendants were also known as Vidyas. Thus the son of Nimi was well known as the king Janaka. He built a beautiful city on the banks of the Ganges. The city became famous also by his name, Jan Janakpur. The king Janaka beautied this city with many forts and arcades and nice buildings, and the city was full of wealth and grains. All the kings of this line became famous by the name of Janaka, and all were endowed with the supreme knowledge. I have now described to you the story of the king Nimi, who got disembodied out of the curse. The king said, O oh, Veda Vyasa, you have described the cause why the king Nimi was cursed. My mind has grown very doubtful, though, and restless on hearing it. The Rishi Vishista was the son of Brahma and the best of the Brahmins, especially he was the royal priest. How was it then that he was cursed by the king? Why did not the king Nimi forgive him, as was the guru and a Brahmin? Why did he become angry when he performed such a great auspicious sacrifice? He was born of the family of Iksabaku, and he knew well the truths and religions. Then how was it that he became subject to anger and curse his own guru? Veda Vyasa said, O king, it is very hard and rare for the person not possessed of self-restraint to forgive, especially when one is fully capable. It is very rare to find one in the three worlds who can forgive. He who has forgotten all forsaken all attachments and had conquered hunger and sleep and has always engaged in yoga, yoga practices, even the ascetic munis is not capable to conquer completely lust, anger, and greed, and ahamkara. The passion raging in the normal coil, none exists before in the whole world who can conquer his passions. None exists now, and none will ex ever be born after. Hardly will be seen in any in the earth or in the heavens or the lower loka, the Brahmas, or in Vaikuntha, even in Kailash, that has conquered completely his passions. What can be said in regards to the ordinary mortal on this earth? When the sons of Brahma, the Maharishis, ascetics, rishis are all pierced by the sattvic, rajas, and tamasic guna. Behold, the Rishi Kapila was the knower of Sankhya and always engaged in his yoga practices, and he was pure. Yet by strange combination of faith, he became angry and burnt to ashes the son of King Sagara. O king, out of the Ahamkara, three worlds are created. Therefore, this world and Ahamkara are related to each other in effect and cause. How then the jivas that are born of this samsara can exercise themselves from the ahamkara? Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva are all pierced by these three gunas. Different feelings are seen in these different bodies. Therefore, it need hardly be said that the manifestation of the pure sattvic guna alone is not to be seen in any of the human beings. For the three gunas reside in the mixed way in all persons. Sometimes the sattvic preponderates, sometimes the rajasic, and sometimes the tamas. Sometimes they reside together, the three balancing one another. Only of the eternal highest purusha is undecaying and unlimited and can hardly be measured or seen by the beings. The highest soul, the highest of high, is nirguna, void of the three gunas. And she resides in all beings and is hardly knowable by the small intellectual person that high Shakti, the incarnate, who is Nirguna, void of attributes. The highest soul and the highest force are also one. Their forms are not different. When such knowledge arises, then the jivas can be free from all sins and faults and blemishes. From the knowledge comes the liberation. This is sounded in the sastras. He who comes to know that is free from the endless birth and deaths. There is no doubt in this. O king, knowledge is of two kinds. The first is considered coming from sound. That This comes out of the knowledge of the meaning of the Vedas by the help of the intellect. But this is full of fancies, agreements, and doubts, some of which are bad and some are good. 
The beings are led into errors by their discussions. Errors cause destruction of intellect, and when the intellect is gone, the knowledge also goes. Whereas the second kind of knowledge comes from intention or feeling within the depth of the heart and brain, and it is called apar, apar oksa yana. This knowledge is very rare in beings. When one comes in contact with the Satguru, the true teacher, then one gets this special yana. From the sound knowledge, no successful results can issue, and therefore it cannot give apakraksa yana. Hence, great effort is to be made for getting this aparaksa yana, O king. Darkness cannot be destroyed merely by talking about light without lighting any lamps, so the knowledge of sound merely cannot destroy the darkness of the inside. That karma is called true karma, which does not lead to bondage, and that knowledge is the true knowledge which leads to liberation. Other actions are only meant for one's own selfish enjoyments, and other knowledge are merely the skill in arts. Good behavior, doing good to others, forgiveness, patience, contentment are the fruits of true knowledge. O king, without knowledge, without ascetics, and without the yoga practices, the lusts and other passions can never be destroyed. The minds of the jivas are naturally restless and without control. All the beings are completely under the sway of their minds. Thus they roam on the earth surface as good, middling, and bad. Lust, anger originate from this mind, and when mind is conquered, then those feelings can no more arise. Therefore it is that Yayati forgave when Sukacharya did wrong before. The king Nima could not forgive his sister in the same way. Yayati, the best of the kings, though cursed by Sukacharya, the son of Rigu, did not curse in return, but he took upon himself the old age. O king, some kings are naturally peaceful, whereas some others are wicked by their nature. Therefore, in this matter, whose fault is this? How can we ascertain? See, in ancient times, for the Hayas, out of their greed of wealth and being thus insensible, destroyed completely out of anger the Brahmin priest of the family of Rigu. What more than that, this, that those Kasatras did not consider the sin of Brahma Hatya, rather out of their dire anger, they cut into pieces the sons of those Brahmanas that, that were embryos in their mother's wombs. Here ends the 15th chapter, the sixth book, and Nimi's getting another body, and the beginning of the story of the Hayas in the Mahapurana Sri Madhi Devi Bhagavatam of 18,000 verses by Veda Vyasa, Maharishi Veda Vyasa. Jai Mahamaya ki jai Vishveshvari mat ki jai Bhule Baba ki jai.